Hey YouTube, so Chen here, and this video is about communication. Communication plays a vital role in home automation. If you're not able to communicate between devices, then you won't be able to automate things. So the Raspberry Pi has different, two different types of communication. It's got serial and ethernet. Um, serial is mostly used for communication between another device, so if it's just one other device, or sensors. Generally, I only use it for sensors. Ethernet, however, is used to communicate between multiple devices um, and the internet and a whole bunch of other things. We're going to be using Ethernet because it allows us to connect multiple devices and my home automation system is actually growing quite big. So if you're going to use Ethernet and you want to use Arduino, you're going to need to get an Arduino Ethernet shield. I have a video coming out pretty soon on the Arduino and what role I think it plays in home automation because it does have some very limiting factors. So here is a network diagram of basically what the network consists of in this example. Uh, there's basically one Raspberry Pi which we're going to use to be a broker and a client and another Raspberry Pi which is just going to be a client. And then we're going to be able to send messages between the two. And to do this we're going to be using MQTT which stands for Message Queue Telemetry Transport. Now MQTT has a lot of advantages. One, it's a very, very lightweight protocol, which means it doesn't require lots of bandwidth and you can use it on basically anything, which is like an Arduino. Um, it's, they have clients for basically every single uh, programming language you can think of. Um, and so we're gonna use it. Also, it scales extremely well. So when you start adding like hundreds and thousands of devices, it can still handle that pretty easily. Okay, so let me explain how MQTT works. MQTT works on a publish subscribe system. And so when a client connects, it will say, hey, I'm looking for all information relating to this topic. And when a client, another client, or the same or itself publishes to that topic, it will get that message. Um, and this way, you can have like 100 devices subscribed to the same topic, and when you publish to that topic, they all get that message. MQTT also has a built-in functionality of checking to make sure messages are delivered. Um, and that if they are corrupted, they get resent. Uh, and that way it works really well on like very slow or flaky internet connections. It's also very low bandwidth intensive, so on a slow internet connection, it will still function 100%. Um, you can find MQTT clients for basically every single programming language you can think of, um, including Arduino, Python, uh, all of that. So uh, let's go over to the Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to show you how to install uh, Mosquito MQTT Broker, which is the broker we're going to be using. Um, it's free, open source, and works really well. So let's over, head over to the computer. Okay, guys, so now that we're on the computer, uh, let's, uh, let's log into the Raspberry Pi, as we did in the previous videos. So uh, you basically go SSH, um, username's Pi, that's the default username, and then the IP address. My IP address is 10.3.0.70. Uh, 71 actually I think um, but this may vary and as I mentioned before in the previous video just uh, plug in a monitor in your Raspberry Pi to see what its IP address is so we're going to type in your password then and in the previous video I showed you how to change this and there we go now we're logged in so um, we're going to start off by uh, essentially putting in this command I'm actually just going to copy it and then I'll give you some time to read it or you can just pause the YouTube video so there we go. It is uh, SEDU apt add repository uh, ppa mosquito dev mosquito uh, ppa. So let's uh, hit enter. And it's going to come up with uh, apt add repository not found. And uh, that will happen if you haven't installed um, the apt uh, so it's the Python software properties. So let's just, I'm going to put, a, I'm going to paste the link in, well, the uh, paste that in. And um, let me just go add SUDO in the front. So SUDO, there we go. And uh, so as you can see, just read this command and just type it in and you hit enter. When you do that, it's gonna come up with this whole thing of it's gonna start loading and it's gonna like, it's gonna download. It's gonna ask you if you wanna install and you're just gonna say yes. And uh, it's gonna install. It takes a couple of seconds. Um, so I'm gonna just skip forward until when it's done. Okay, there it's done. Um, so now what you're going to do is you're just going to use the app arrow on your keyboard and hit it twice so it brings up that original command we put in and you can hit enter. And uh, now it's going to probably do the same thing. It's going to install and it's going to say you want to continue, hit enter, hit enter and there we go. So it's done. And basically all that did was it just added the Mosquito repository to your list of repositories so that we can install software from Mosquito. So now we're going to put in the, the update command 
And uh, this is going to take a while, so I am going to uh, I'm going to skip until when this is done. Okay, so it looks like it's done. It does come up with some error messages, but that should be fine. It's just some old files that are not found. So then we're going to put in this next command. Uh, let me just copy it and paste it in here for you. Okay, it's sudo apt get install mosquito python dash mosquito. And uh, what this is doing is it's installing the broker. Uh, Mosquito, and it's also ins installing the uh, libraries so that we can use Python later to actually talk to the broker. So let's just hit enter. And uh, again, it's going to install uh, this. It should, uh, let's see what happens. It should ask us for a yes or no. I'm just going to say Y and then enter to say yes. And now it's going to install. And so I'm going to jump uh, to when this is done. Okay, so it looks like it's done. And so now we're going to put in another command. And what this is going to do is it's going to install the Mosquito client so that we can interact with Mosquito via the command line. So let's just uh, paste that command in. And uh, that command is sudo apt-get install Mosquito clients. And uh, let's skip to when it's done. Okay, so it's done. And uh, now we're just going to test it out by pasting in this command, which is mosquito underscore sub uh, space dash d space dash t and uh, hello forward slash world. And the, uh, the dash T is actually telling us that the hello world is going to be the topic. And the uh, dash D is telling us to put it in debug mode so we can see every single piece of data that the, uh, that the client is sending to the broker. So let's hit enter. And voila, it is connected. Um, and you can see that it says we're subscribed right there. So it knows we subscribed to the topic. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up another terminal. So there we go, we've got a new uh, terminal window open. So let's just do what we did last time, type in ssh pi at, in my case, it's this, but this will be different depending on which network you're using. Then you have to type in your password. Okay, and I'm gonna make this a bit bigger because I know my next command's gonna be long. And uh, we're gonna run this command, which here it is. It's mosquito underscore um, pub space dash d dash t hello world dash m so as you can see the dash t is hello world uh, which is the topic and uh, dash m is the message and the message we're going to be sending is hello mqtt this is my first message so let's hit enter and there we go if you look at the uh, terminal above we'll see hello mqtt this is my first message and uh, we can see there's some other data associated with it. And uh, it says the topic's Hello World. So that's it. That's basically how to get the broker up and running. Um, I'm going to actually put a link in description is the uh, article on which I used that I basically followed in order to install, install MQTT. OK, so uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a Python script um, so that you can use it to like control GPIO or all of that using MQTT. And then uh, also I want to just show you something before that, and that's uh, screen. So let's, uh, let's go in and install screen. So first uh, to exit out of this, all you need to do is push uh, control and C and it will exit. Um, okay, so now we're gonna go install something called screen. It's uh, pretty easy to install. You just go, uh, you just type in this command. There it is. SEDO apt get install screen, very simple. And uh, I'm going to jump to when this is done. Okay, so screen is done. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to actually install uh, the latest uh, Mosquito client uh, libraries for Python. Um, the one that I would do installed earlier uh, is like the fundamentals, but it's not the latest one. So unfortunately, it looks like you couldn't see what that command was because it, it went. But uh, that's the command there. Um, you just run that so that it basically installs the library. Um, well, it's actually not installing the library. It's just like, it's basically just downloading the library and now we're gonna install it. First we need to do is go into that directory. So we just use that command right there. And um, uh, let's see, there we go. We need to just uh, run that command right there. Let's just run this command. So that was actually a Python 3 install. We need to basically run that again, but as just normal Python. And this means that, that the, the, the library will be installed for both Python 2.7 and Python 3. So depending on, it doesn't matter what you want to program in. Um, in the previous tutorials, I've been programming in, in Python 
2.7. So let's just go back to home directory by just typing in CD. Cool, now we're back at our home directory. Now we're gonna type in S U D O uh let's go SUDO nano test three dot python. So this is what it looks like uh when you open that file. And uh I'm not really gonna explain everything, but I'm gonna go through it pretty quickly um and just basically try to explain as much as I can. Um, but I am going to be posting a link to the code in the description below so you can just download it from my Google Drive probably will be the link. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> there is uh, that, this line basically imports the uh, library, the MQTT library, which is what we need. Um, there we go. Next, next line of code, this is a function called unconnect. This function gets called by MQTT when it connects to the server and here we're just saying connected and uh, we're, we're telling it to subscribe to a topic. So you can just copy this uh, client.subscribe uh, multiple times after this and just put in all the topics you want it to subscribe to. Okay, and then the next function we're gonna create is this one called on message. It, this function gets called every time MQTT receives a message. Um, firstly, it just prints out the, uh, the topic and the payload, so essentially the topic and the message. Um, and then the next line here, we're taking the payload um, using this function to turn it into, well, to make sure it's a string um, and putting it in the variable message. And then we're going if message equal LED, then print yay LED. And uh, so you can replace this word LED with anything you want. And uh, instead of having print, you can put in like, um, you want GPIO, you know, you want to turn the LED on and off. Um, that's all up to you. So if you had a yeah, if you followed my second tutorial that I did, the Raspberry Pi uh, part two, then you would be able to just do that, basically change out that function. And then the next block of code over here, this is uh, basically initializing uh, MQTT. Uh, over here, we're essentially signing the on connect and on message to the actual functions which we created earlier. And then over here, it's this client connect. Um, and uh, as you can see, it says local host. If you're gonna run this on a client other than the same computer as the broker, then you need to change this from local host to the IP address of the broker. Uh, you can also use MQTT's online one. Uh, they've got a test server. If you just Google uh, Mosquito uh, MQTT test broker, you will come up and you can uh, have all the information there. Just please note though that that is completely open. If somebody finds the topic that you're, that you're using, um, they can easily read what's happening and they can post uh, or publish. So if you like have this to like control your door or your light or something, um, it's very easy for somebody to just hijack that. Uh, so I, I would suggest using your own one. Um, and then this line over here is client publish. Um, we're just publishing online into the topic, hello world. And uh, the reason I put this here is so that you know that's how you publish. And uh, you can always you know, use the, the uh, tutorial that I did, number two, um, and you can actually replace where I tell it to turn an LED on when you push a button to actually just publish when you push a button. Uh, and that way you can have like uh, two Raspberry Pis, like when you hit the one on the button on the one, it sends a message to the other one and that turns on an LED or something so that if you have, you wanna do, you wanna do like remote buttons or something through, uh, through network, you can do that. And then the final line is this uh, is this line here called a client loop forever. And that basically just means this Python script's gonna loop, uh, it's not gonna end. So then you go control O to save, control X to exit. And uh, then you're gonna need to do is type in SUDO um, Python 3, because this is a Python 3 script, uh, test 3.python, because that's what we called it earlier, and hit enter. And if all goes well, you should get that uh, connected with result code zero. So now if we go back to the other terminal and uh, we tell it to publish this message again, boom, and we go back, you can see here it's got your message. Now what we can do is, uh, let's go back to the other terminal, we can, uh, we can go here and we can change this message. Let's change it to LED because that's the uh, one that has our special function in it, right? So we change it to LED, boom. I actually noticed this. Um, so I noticed this and I think I should maybe just be aware of this as well, is that it puts this B comma uh, in for LED for some reason in Python 3. I don't actually know why it does that. 
So if we go here and go Control C to to uh, you have to t you have to do it twice to exit, and go back to Nano, and go to LED, which is over here. I think it might be to do with the fact the string command. Are we converting this into a string? If we change this to B LED, and uh, save that out, and run that again. See, it's connected again. Let's run LED. Let's send the LED command again. Boom. Okay. So you can see there it says Yay LED. Um, I don't know why it has that B, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, but I will be looking into it and I'll, I'll let you guys know if I find out why it does that. But in the meantime, you just have to include it or uh, use the Python uh, function called split um, for the more advanced users. Just use a split and essentially just get rid of whatever's before that first apostrophe. Okay guys, so I nearly forgot about screen. So we installed screen earlier and what screen allows you to do is run detached terminals. And you, the reason you want to do that is because if you were to close this uh, terminal while you had a Python script running, it would just stop. That Python script would be killed and it wouldn't continue to run. And so you don't want that. You want your Raspberry Pi to continuously run the same script over and over and over and over forever. Um, and you don't have to, you don't want to be log, have to be like be logged in the entire time for that to happen. So in order to do that, we're going to use something called screen. And to do that, you just go sudo screen, whoops, screen dash s to create a new session and you type in i'm gonna use the word test three uh you're basically just giving it a name so we can use test three because that's the same name as our python script and hit enter and boom well we're dropped at a new entirely new terminal and as you can see it's running as root which means we don't have to uh, put sudo if we're in a you know when because it, it's going to just run as root anyways so we're going to go python uh, three test three Python there we go and we hit enter and boom our Python script that we created earlier is running and now we can detach from this uh, to do that we're just gonna go control AD but you need to do it pretty quickly so you go control and then AD quickly and boom we detached and here it says detached from that's the PID and uh, there's the name test and uh, if you want to go back to this terminal, which is pretty cool, so like if you've had the script running and something happened, you're like, oh, what happened? You want to read the error message or whatever, you can actually just go sudo screen dash r and, oh, sorry, I made that, I spelled that wrong, whoops, screen dash r, and it'll drop you right back in to um, where you left off. And if we have, if you have multiple scripts running, so I'm going to exit that. I'm going to create a, let's create a new script. Uh, let's call this test four, and uh, that's it. I'm going to detach from that, and uh, now I'm going to go SEDO screen R. It will it will list, and there is the the IDs and the name. And so if you want to if you want to get back to it, uh, all you need to do is just go R and then just type in the number. So I'm going to go back to number test three, for instance. So I'm going to type in. 23, 24, and hit enter, and boom, we're back at it. And that's uh, that screen. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, I hope you liked this video. Please thumbs it up if you did, thumbs it down if you didn't. Uh, comment with any suggestions or any helpful information or something that I missed. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, so yeah, I have a couple videos planned. Uh, one that's got to do with just how to use screen and how to make screen automatically start up and run your scripts on, on like boot. Um, so yeah, that'll be the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Cheers guys. Bye.